for the busted hearts This is for the question marks This is for the outcast so lost control No one knows Sing it for the can't go back Sing it for the broken past Sing it for the truth found out Life is now upside down If you're looking for hope tonight, raise your hand If you feel alone and don't understand If you're fighting in the fight of your life, then stand We're gonna make it through this hand in hand And if we fall, we will fall together our differences together we are bolder braver stronger Woo! isn't that a great way to kick off our our program tonight for king and country made that uh that available to free wheelchair mission so um I'm, I'm so glad so we could enjoy that tonight so thank thank everybody for coming also for those online uh, thank you for joining us as well. I do want to say thank you once again to our sponsors, uh, Evergreen Church, where we sit tonight, Davis Door, Jeff and Nancy Davis at Davis Door Service, and then Gay, uh, Gay Brook with Summit Seekers. They um, donated money so all of this could be offered uh, with no tickets, all for free. So thank you. <laughs> and also want to say, say thank you to Lee and Esther. They coordinated all the food, uh, ordering it and, and arranging that with a caterer. And, um, and then also Esther made these wonderful centerpieces. So they're just beautiful. So I'll let you guys fight over them at your table, uh, but be sure you take those home at the end of the night. Same thing with those uh, books on the table too. So um, also for Gordy Grobe for arranging uh, the buffet out there, and he'll be working late tonight. Um, Dan, Dan Kihana uh, uh, organized all the, the tables, the stuff you see on the table, Walt and Thelma, Dan and Carolyn, uh, Tim and Cindy. Um, Tim uh, all, all helped with setup, and then uh, Tim and Ian Davis uh, helping with the virtual reality. So a lot, of, a lot of hands, and I'm sure I forgot people, so I apologize. But a lot of people help out with this event each year, and we just couldn't do it without them. 
But our goal tonight is to bless 833 people with the gift of mobility. So, um, you know, you see these pictures of recipients, and each of those pictures tells a story, right? So think about it. We're here to create 833 new stories for free wheelchair, uh, free wheelchair mission. And I'm, we're um, going to show you a video. It's a, only about two minutes or so. Um, from one story about Oct Octavio and Alfonso. So you'll hear their story, and then after that, I'm going to ask Georgia Close to come up and share some words of welcome. So let's hear this story. My son and I were not born with disabilities. We used to be artists and divers. I am Octavio, and this is Alfonso. We belong to the Mesquita Indigenous Tribe in the North Atlantic of Nicaragua. For centuries, our people have lived from fishing and diving. My ancestors were divers. I was also a diver for 32 years, and I taught my son Alfonso that way as well. It is a dangerous job that requires diving up to 130 feet deep without equipment in order to obtain the fruit of the depths. When you dive into the waters, you are always aware that it might be the last time, but the responsibility of being the provider drives you to do it. On our last dive, we decided to go deeper under normal to look for a daily lobster. We surfaced too fast, and that's when the day came that we never expected. We both suffered a cerebral embolism. My son Alfonso and I were transferred from the high seas to the hospital in Bilwi, Nicaragua to try to regulate the cerebral decompression in one of the only two decompression chambers in my country. But it was too late. The damage to our bodies was done. We had lost our mobility. We have to face the challenge of never walking again. Struggling with the thoughts of what did we do wrong? Why us? Why both of us? When all seemed lost, and just as my son and I lost our mobility, we regain it. We receive our first wheelchairs. We couldn't believe it. The wheelchair not only changed our lives, it enabled us to do everyday things. And we knew we have gotten new legs, a new opportunity. I am thankful to Free Wheelchair Mission for giving us our lives back. That's a way to start. <laughs> 833 stories. That's a lot. Um, <laughs> that's a lot, but that's a great reminder. And um, thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Um, a couple things really quick. Hello also to all you live streamers. We, won't, we don't want to forget about you. I don't know where you are out there if I'm looking at the camera. Hopefully it's not back here, but Hello to all of you. Um, I'm the boring part, so if you want to take a minute and go get a bathroom break or a refill or popcorn, come back and then I'm going to introduce this wonderful gentleman to you who um, a lot of you already know. So he's going to tell you all the juicy details about what's been happening at Free Wheelchair Mission in the last year. So I'll save it for him. Um, really quick, don't forget these. I know Dan mentioned them, but one thing we really are trying to be aware of is we got to bring this to the next generation. And um, we have been around 20 years now and know and love our supporters so much, but we have to bring this to the next generation. And this is a really funny, fun, simple, easy way to do it. So if you have kids or grandkids, take this with you and play a game with them over the holidays and um, whatever change you know they get for doing chores, put it in this little box. And um, once it's filled with $96, there's a little piece of paper that explains what to do with it. So um, help them help themselves in raising a wheelchair. And in essence, they're going to be a part of these 833 stories that hopefully we get to tonight. So don't forget that. And also, don't forget yourself. Check out these VR goggles. Um, if, you, if you can handle some 3D virtual reality, go check them out. Go sit down and get an experience. It's... If you've ever been on a vision trip with Free Wheelchair Mission, there's just nothing like it. So go do it. Don't forget that. Um, anyhow, so 
A couple things I just want to say after this, if you have questions and Don's not available, come talk to me because I'm definitely not as popular or as interesting. But um, I can try and answer your question as best I can. I've been a fan and a lover and now a staff member of Free Will Tremission for a decade plus. And um, I hope that you can find a question that might stump me because it will humble me and God knows I need that. So please come try and stump me. Uh, but most importantly, I just want to say thank you before I introduce Don, and um, we're going to say thank you in so many ways tonight. But it's this group, whether it's by association or, you know, if you've been around this whole time uh, in Mercer Island helping us, you guys have done this for thousands and thousands and thousands of families. So there are thousands of stories out there beyond thousands that are because of you. And um, that's something that's really, really close to our hearts. So thank you so much. And um, I know over the last year and a half, the enemy really tried to divide our churches and he tried to divide the work of free will mission, but he was unsuccessful. And as a staff member and a lover of free will mission, I just wanna let you know that I am so proud to work for this team. And if you've ever worked on a team, you know how important it is to work with good people. And this is amazing leadership. Don is amazing leadership. And our team back at home, they are amazing leadership. And there's nothing like it. So I just want to tell you that you are behind something very good. Very good. And I know we can do this for 833 people. So I'm going to close my mouth. And I'm going to introduce you to the gentleman who is responsible for over a million stories and um, a million testimonies. And I just want to ask you tonight, will you put it in your heart, how many testimonies do you want to create? Because when you do this, when you give a wheelchair, you're doing that. You really are. So I'm going to let Don come up and tell you all about that. Don Schoendorfer. I got like this. And um, thank you, Georgia. Um, and when talking about leadership, I, I got to hand it to Ron for putting this together you know, five years now in a row. And it's a big job. George can tell. <laughs> George knows how hard to do it. I think you were doing it for 10 or so. But um, and, and it's the leader that, that makes these things happen. And for me, I feel like I'm... It's not quite a reunion, because uh, I think I was there about four years ago, but uh, between four years ago and 16 years ago, I was coming here quite often, not just for an annual event, because we didn't even have Matt, the, the times two match before then, but I'd come because George would have an idea that he need, I need to visit this person and that person, and, and there'd always be, so you'd always make room for me at the church when, I was, I, when I'd be here on a Sunday, which was, so uh, I, I feel like I'm back amongst friends. And that's a really nice thing, a really nice feeling, because you make me feel welcome. Um, so our story, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that there's maybe people that haven't heard it from the beginning. So I'm gonna kind of hit the, the early parts of it. Um, I, I like to think in terms of uh, Floor. She's the lady that we gave the millionth wheelchair away back in 2017 in the high Andes in Peru. And the thing about Floor that uh, you could probably recognize, see how her legs are getting close to the ground and her mother's quite short. So there's gonna be a time when her mother won't be able to carry her anymore. And she's, and she's already stopped going to school because she can't get to school. So what's the recourse? What does a mom say to a daughter? I'll stay home with you as long as I live but you're gonna live longer than I am because you're my daughter. So what happens after that? And that's kind of how you're leaving. That's how our uh, people with a, who have, can't walk, that's how they're left, by themselves in some cases, unless someone else comes to take care of them. And then she knew she was gonna get a wheelchair. And um, it was a very joyous occasion. I think you've probably seen this picture before, but. She, Pardon? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, she couldn't stop giggling 
uh, because it was just so, she didn't know how to control her happiness other than to be giggling and, and clapping and giggling and clapping and singing songs in Spanish, and not in Spanish, but Quechua that we wouldn't have understood anyway. Um, but um, that's what happens when you give somebody a wheelchair. So this is a little bit how it started, although this is not the picture I would have taken had I had a camera and thought about what my future was going to be in um, 1979. There was a woman crawling on the ground. when My wife and I were in Morocco on vacation, and, and she was crawling on the ground, but she wasn't begging like this person. We're not sure. I can't tell. It looks like maybe it's a lady, uh, but she's getting some money. Uh, but. I, I don't know, that was the first time I, ever, I can't even imagine somebody crawling on the ground and there was somebody there. And uh, I, I, was, I was challenged, but that was 20 years before I even did anything about it. But I started to look into it and I found out there's 75 million people like her, which is an estimate that comes from the World Health Organization, which is clearly an, an, uh, a number that you could not prove they just pulled it out of the air. Uh, and I think the number is much higher than that, but it doesn't have to be much higher than that to be a number. I mean, put it in perspective, this is your Lumen uh, Stadium in Seattle, and it holds um, 7,200, 72,000 people. So 20, 75 million, that'd be like loading, filling that stadium up 1,042 times with people. It's a lot of people. And um, when I heard that and I realized what, uh, how people were solving it, there were a lot of uh, organizations that had put 20 years into uh, trying to solve the problem. With um, Generally, it's used chairs that have been used in this country and that are, are put aside because the insurance company would buy a new one, a replacement. But who wants to give, no, who wants to use wheelchair in the United States? Nobody. But then it still has value, so these organizations would gobble these chairs up and they'd refurbish them and then they'd send them. Uh, or they might even just buy uh, inexpensive conventional U.S. wheelchairs. But in um, 1999, I added up all, the, all that everybody had done to, to supply wheelchairs for the 75 million, all around the world, and it added up to a number slightly more than 100,000 wheelchairs that they had given in 20 years of work. And these, they were putting their hearts behind it. This was, this was a serious matter for them. Volunteers, organizations, but you got the wrong model. That was what an engineer would say. And I wasn't burdened with a lot of experience, which is nice to be able to be sometimes, you know, right? So you know, this is my laboratory, right? In California, you don't have room for, you know, who wants a car in a garage when you can do more interesting things? And so I, I, I put my, you know, let's make an inexpensive, durable, functional wheelchair. And I didn't know all the things you do. You may have to worry about depending on their disability. I just think, you know, if I was that woman in Morocco, I just want to get up off the ground. So I went to Toys R Us and I went to Home Depot and Toys R Us had bicycles and Home Depot had white red salon chairs on sale. And I, I just, what more do you need? The chair, the name has a name, has all the ingredients, wheelchair, just figure out how to get the wheels on the chair and you've got it done. Uh, and so I did and then I made, um, the, the final model looks a little bit like this, but we have one on the stage. And then I, uh, I made 100 of them and I was going to prove a point that you could, you could change somebody's life with an inexpensive, durable, functional wheelchair. And, and we did, when that's, and this that white chair at the end, you're, you'll have a hard time seeing it, but it's just a lawn chair with mountain bike tires, footrest, brakes, um, hand rims so you can put your hands on, the, you don't have to put your hands on the tires, but, and we, we gave them away and it was just amazing. I was thinking I was gonna need a lot of data, but uh, what I found out, the, the compassion was so warm and so powerful. I, I didn't need to give somebody a whole lot of data about how long the chair would last or what, what, it was gonna, what the people were gonna do, because you could just see the tears and the happiness and, the, and the, the relief that the family would have because they wouldn't be carrying their grandfather around anymore. They'd have a wheelchair, they could push him. And the, the, the lives were being changed in front of our eyes in a matter of seconds. And 
So we stuck with that chair for quite a few years, and then, and then the, um, the experience, the lack of experience caught up on me, and we realized there's better things you can do with some people uh, because you want them to be comfortable. And um, it'd be like me, um, I have a very expensive pair of shoes I'm gonna give you. They're beautiful, they've never been worn, and you're very happy to get these shoes. And you put them on and they maybe hurt a little bit, but you're so happy to get these brand new shoes. They're gonna, whatever you wanna do with these brand new shoes, but you take them home and you wear them for a day and they're too tight. And you're not gonna wear them much longer because they're gonna hurt your feet. And, you know, and a, wheel can, a wheelchair can do that too. If you don't make the adjustments properly to make the people feel comfortable, they'll, they'll be happy to get the chair, they'll be smiling, they'll be crying, they'll be doing all these things, but it might not be something they wanna use. So we come up with a way with um, these, Gen 2 and the Gen 3, where you can make all kinds of adjustments. And we have four different sizes of each one. So we, right off the bat, we have eight different wheelchairs you can order depending on what you want. And they make all these adjustments and um, it was a big hit. It cost us a bit more money. It took us a lot more effort to train our partners because they had to know how to make all these adjustments. Uh, but they really want to help people too, and they understand a, a, a better fit of the chair would be better appreciated. So uh, we've pretty much dropped the Gen 1, but the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 are here on the stage. You come on up later, you can sit in it and check it out if you like. And just the last four years, I've been doing research on wheelchairs for people in developing countries. And some people say, why would you want to do research for something you're going to give away and they're just going to get it and they're going to go away and you're not going to, well, I want them to last as long as possible. So we built this test track and it's, um, I, if I had a movie, I'd love to play it. It's very loud when it's playing, when it's running. But it's got these four chairs that are, four wheelchairs mounted and there's bumps underneath the conveyor belt that the chairs are exposed to. And we've got 100 kilogram, 220 pound dummies on these chairs, and they're all running through the same course. And so you can take what you think is your good model, and then you can take a sample of maybe something that you want to test, and you can compare the two. And the way we learn which is better is which one lasts longer, because we, we run them until they break, uh, which sounds a little crazy, doesn't it? But that's how you learn. Because it's very complicated to model this in any kind of analytical, um, in an analytical way. This is an empirical test. But we've taken a chair that used to last 22 hours out of the box, and after two years, we got it lasting 830 hours. Now, to put it in perspective, I got a wheelchair from Walgreens, and it lasted two hours. So these are the ones that the government says we can sell to people in the United States because they're good enough. Well, they are good enough for the United States because they have floors like this. But people in developing countries don't have floors like this. They're out there, terrain is very tough. So um, here's the factory. They're tooling these out. Even at the, as we speak, they're making them as quickly as they can. They've had a lot of hardships because the electricity's gone up and the supplies are tough and, and the virus is at their heels every day in China. Um, and, uh, but there, you can see, it's, it's pretty busy. This is what happens once they've been packed up, they get on a container. I'm gonna bring this issue up later about these container ships. And then they, they arrive at a, uh, at a destination and then they have to unpack the container. I, another man and I unpacked one of those containers once. It took us about two days and it was, it was hard work because you don't have forklifts and stuff because everything's by hand. And then, um, this is where we've been sending them. The, the, the darker, I guess you might call it blue, I don't know, you probably have a better name for that color, but uh, you, can, you can see a lot of Latin America, a lot of South, Central America, South America, a lot in Asia, and we've got a lot of countries hit, uh, hitting in Africa as well. Um, 94 countries so far, but so far we're active in about 50. Uh, active means there's partners who do a really good job and we wanna give them the wheelchairs. And then these, this is what our partner does. When they get the 500 wheelchairs in a the container, they have to assemble them. They have to find the people to give them to. Uh, they have to make the adjustments when the people come for the chair. They have to train the people how to use the chair, train the family how to 
to use the chair, how to go downstairs, how to go upstairs, how to ramps and get it into a trunk of a car and all those things. So these are, in a way, our, our real customers, our, our distribution partners. Um, and I, I don't know if you can tell the, the shoelaces on this girl. I did not pick those shoelaces out to match the color of the wheelchair. But this was just random. But this is when you can get things to fit. And you know they can fit. And see, she has a harness on because we we're afraid she might fall out because of her disability. She didn't quite have the upper body coordination. But uh, you know, this is her first 10 feet of going on a wheelchair where she used to crawl. Uh, you can see how happy she is. She's maybe never moved herself before other than by crawling. Um, so what's going on now with our organization? Well, just like you, our lives have been upside down because of the virus. We're a virtual outfit now. We, we do everything by Zoom. Um, we have people in different parts of the United States and also different parts of the world. So Zoom is working very well for us. We'll probably stay virtual uh, for the future, the near future at least, anyway. Um, and um, it, it helped if the virus, people were concerned about the financial situation of the country. You probably had that same feeling too. So our donations went down about 40% on the first year. Our distribution partners were, we think we have things to, to worry about. But in, you're in a developing country, you don't get the, the news we get confused because we get too much news. It's better than not getting any news, which is what people in developing countries get. And um, of some of the countries that were our major partners, they're not even open yet for wheelchairs because there's no vaccines. All they can do is get masks and, and try to isolate. Um, and the countries are shot down repeatedly because there's an outbreak of, of a virus. The only way they know how to do it is to isolate that area for a few weeks and then maybe it'll go away. But uh, we, we felt bad because we're asking partners to go give away wheelchairs. We know there's virus out there. Is it fair to ask people to go give away wheelchairs without training them about the risk of getting a virus and supplying them with goods too? So we, we, we learned where we could get masks. Uh, we sent them with our wheelchairs. You can see these are you know, two years ago, you wouldn't see somebody wearing a mask putting together their wheelchair. We gave them the gowns, we gave them the gloves, we gave them training about keeping social distance. You know, when you're using a wheelchair, try to keep your hands on the hand rims, don't put your hands on the wheels because that's where the dirt, that's what hits the road. Keeping, uh, keeping distance and, and just being careful because there's a virus out there. And then, you know, they, we used to give wheelchairs away. I'd be hugging people and I'd be you know, helping them get in the chair and we've taught our partners, keep your distance. Be respectful, tell the families that they should be aware of this, give them masks as well. So this is one gentleman you know, explaining not only the wheelchair but how to avoid getting a virus. And I think Nuka was here the last couple um, times, right? And, uh, Ron asked me if I could give you an update on Haiti, because she may have told you she was from Haiti. Um, the earthquake hit, uh, and it's sort of like a peninsula. It, it was quite a far from um, um, uh, the capital where the earth, earthquake hit in 2010. And it's a very remote area, and it's very hard to get aid there, because you can see what the roads are like. Um, kind of hard to get a truck through there, right? Um, this was a church uh, that was down the street from one of the cities that their family lived in. That's before and that's, this is after. These are what the roads look like. But where there's a will, there's a way. So they figured out how to get wheelchairs in by boat. Don't worry about the roads. Bring them in by boat. And um, slower, takes time, probably a little bit more expensive than a truck. But uh, we got wheelchairs in, within, in there within two days. And this is the first distribution they had in, in this earthquake area. Our partners just want to help. They'll do anything they can to help the people. And in this situation in Haiti, they really do need lots of help. 
So now we, you've already heard a little bit about the investment in a wheelchair, get a story. Um, then they let me tell you what you might consider to be the bad news. It used to be $80, now it's 96. And tell, let me tell you why. We haven't raised the price for five years. Can you name, did you know anything that you've been buying for five years where the price hasn't gone up? Um, the material cost, if the price of the steel, the price of the plastics, the polypropylene, the polyethylene, everything in China is going up. Um, labor raised in China is going up. They went up about 10% last year. And the US dollar is declining in value and exchange rate to the RMB, that's the currency in China. So all these reasons have forced us to increase the cost. Um, but the other thing is, in, with that lab I told you about, we've made about 20 improvements on this wheelchair. Every now and then, we find one that we can actually save money. Uh, the improvement will, will lessen the cost of the chair, but that's very rare. Most of the time, it adds nickels, dimes, quarters. And so we have these to go, to, to have to pay for. And then shipping, I mentioned I'd bring this up. Um, that kind of... Uh, Purple, it's going to be hard for you to read that, but the one that's peaked out on the top is sort of an orange. It starts out at the bottom of the slide at 3,000 and it's up to 10. It's just because of the shipping companies, and if you, you I'm, I'm told in Seattle, the port looks like it does down in Long Beach in LA. It's just crowded. It's like a convoy of, of container ships waiting to get this, this um, uh, unloaded. You know, and people give us wheelchair money for wheelchairs. They, they don't want us to hold on to the money. So we're having to absorb that, this, I would say, exorbitant shipping costs. And so that's the justification for the uh, increased cost of the, the wheelchair. But it's still less than $100, right? <laughs> so we got a little ways to go yet before we get it over $100. Um, I got to end in the story, and I know you haven't heard the story because I'm the only one that knows the story, and I haven't been up here for a few years. And about two and a half years ago, I took my daughters and son-in-laws to Uganda because I want they wanted I wanted them to know what we've been doing the last 20 years. And uh, one of my favorite jobs is to get on my knees and adjust the footrest of somebody who's in the chair. And the reason why I like that is because I'm looking up at them. And they probably have never had anybody look up to them before. They've been on the ground. And, and it takes a little bit of a time to get the wheelchairs, the wheelchairs, the footers just right. Uh, and sometimes you have to actually have them have them move from the chair so you can really make some other adjustments. Uh, so this, this woman comes up and she's carrying her, her son. And he probably weighs 70 or 80 pounds. And she's, she's laughing and she's crying at the same time. You, can, you might be able to imagine what that would be like, and maybe you've even done it yourself. You're happy, you're so happy you're crying. And, and the tears are rolling down her face, and she, she knows she's gonna get a wheelchair for her son, so she comes and she puts her son in the chair, and I get it all, the footrest all adjusted, and I'm about ready to stand up, and she reaches down and grabs my, my forearm, and she says, I've always known that God loves me, and then she takes a deep breath and clears her throat and she said, but I didn't know he loved me this much. This is a free will mission. This is what you're doing. So thank you. Thank you, Don. Wow. Um, well, you might notice by their logo that uh, free wheelchair mission is celebrating their 20th year. And about a month ago, you also might remember that we celebrated something else that happened 20 years ago, the tragedy of 9-11. And for me, it was the first time that I uh, remember hearing the term first responders. And, and I first understood that first responders run into suffering. And that's really what, what Free Wheelchair Mission does as well. Um, when they get enough funds from people like us, they ship a container to a port near uh, a city where people need wheelchairs. And the distribution workers, the partners, 
run into that suffering and ease it by a lot. Now, here's another term you are likely familiar with, blessed to bless. As God blesses us, I believe it's our responsibility to bless others. Uh, we're blessed with time and energy. Let's bless others with it. We're blessed with skills and ability. Uh, let's bless others with that. We're blessed with financial resources. So we have an opportunity to bless others tonight, and I hope we can bless a lot of people. As you've heard, our goal is to bless 833 people with the gift of mobility. And now I know what you're thinking. Well, Don just told us uh, it's 96 bucks for a chair. Well, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of cash. Well, let me show you one way that we can get there. Um, you can see uh, we need three people to give 10,000, 27, 254, and so on and so forth. Well, I've got some great news. Um, three people have already stepped up and given uh, that $30,000 uh, mark. So you can breathe easy. That spot is taken. You don't have to do that. But we've got some really generous people in the room here tonight. And also, even that second amount, I found out, is taken care of tonight as well. So again, some really blessed people. But you can see, we need two people to give 5000 for 2000 8 1000 now, don't throw anything at me. I'm just going to have a little fun. But have you ever gone shopping and spent more than you th wanted to? <laughs> gone on a vacation? Oh, boy, that uh, Disneyland vacation cost more than we thought, honey. We better cut back uh, for another month or so. But, boy, the pictures we got, the memories were priceless. I thought you were going to get just shoes. What's all these other bags? Well, there was a great sale on. Well, when, when you spent more than you planned, did you survive? Well, of course you did. So now I'm not saying you need to take out a second mortgage or anything, but I'm going to ask everybody to be as generous as they can and uh, maybe spend a little bit more than you thought. What's the worst that could happen? might lift a few more people off the ground. And let me give you just a, a little more impact. You're familiar with the Double Your Impact uh, program that some very generous folks in Orange County, I'm assuming, uh, other parts of the country or mainly Orange County, every October they say anything that gets donated to Free Wheelchair Mission in October, we're going to match it. So if we hit our goal of 833, that's over 1,600 stories that we'll be able to create out there. And then just imagine the moms and the dads and the siblings that are blessed as well. So we can just do a tremendous amount of good here tonight. So uh, let me explain how to give. And uh, on your tables are um, some response cards. If you're online, just go to seattlemobility.org and click on the Donate uh, Now button. And, uh, or you could do that from your phone right here as well. If you want to go to seattlemobility.org on your phone and click on Donate Now, you can do that. Uh, or just use the cards on your table. There's pens on your table. Uh, each card has a postage, uh, a postage uh, paid envelope if you want to mail it later. But we will be collecting these right at the end of the program to make sure that all your information stays uh, secure. So put them in that big white envelope. Uh, that's on your table, and we will collect those immediately. So while you're doing that, uh, we're going to play another uh, music video that we, our messengers, did for uh, Free Wheelchair Mission. So let's play that, and again, please take some time to fill out the response cards at your table, and then I'll be back to wrap up. Thanks. <laughs> I woke up with a broken heart in my chest I couldn't sleep, couldn't get no rest Weighed down by the heaviness of life And I try to shake it flipping through my phone But all it does is make me feel more alone How could anything that feels so wrong be right? Seven billion voices separate us but only one can show us who we are We are made, made in the image of Made in the image of God 
beautiful shades of love We are made, made in the image of Made in the image of God That's where the light comes from the same medicine We all need another second chance There's no first in line at the foot of the cross Father forgive me Show my concrete heart We are Just a, a couple of things. Uh, you've heard a little bit about those cube banks. So again, if you've got grandkids, kids, we're going to put one just on our dining room table. Maybe you put it on your coffee table. Whenever folks come over, tell them about the mission and see if they want to help. I bet uh, it'll fill up with $96 quicker than you think. Also, in about a week uh, after you uh, give, you'll get an email from Free Wheelchair Mission. And, and if you work for, well, this is just a few of the companies that we know for sure match uh, charitable giving. Uh, but please check, if you don't know, check with your HR department at work. And uh, over the last few years, about uh, we get like an extra 100 chairs that come just through these corporate matches. So it's one extra step, and they'll say, hey, we need a copy of your uh, receipt, and you'll get that via email. But then take that next step and do the paperwork involved to get the, to request a a corporate match. Now, there's there's one couple I, I'm waiting till now to say thank you to because it's a, a very special couple uh, who's been supporting Free Wheelchair Mission from day one. Uh, very generous donors, and they've shown a ton of uh, hospitality to Don and other folks from Free Wheelchair Mission, and that's James and Doris Cassan. So, James, Doris, thank you. God bless you so much. It's great to see you. Great to see you guys. Also, the centerpieces, grab them, take them home. Um, you've got those infographic sheets on, uh, on the tables. Uh, if you want to give those Christmas cards, uh, you know, if you've given, it's on the honor system. If you've given wheelchairs, grab those cards and send them to family members and say you've given those uh, in their name, in their, uh, in their name, and you can use the cards for that. Uh, makes a great stocking stuffer as well. There's books on the table. Uh, to ch be sure to take those. But I uh, just want to say again, thank you to everybody that helped uh, th with this event. And thank you guys for coming. Thanks for watching online. And take your time. We'll play some music and, and just enjoy. There's still more cookies, coffee, punch. And uh, I think Gordy's got the uh, um, to-go boxes uh, ready to go if you want to take some Indian food. So God bless you, and God bless Free Wheelchair Mission. <laughs>